Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Royal O'Brien. I'm going to walk you through a few ways of importing assets into O3DE. Uh, a lot of people aren't really sure how to bring assets in or if it's possible and how to work with the environment. So I'm going to show you how to pull them in uh, from a lot of different sources. Uh, the first thing I want to do here is kind of start from the basics. Uh, I'm going to fire off the O3D project manager. I have a few projects already put together, uh, but just for completeness sake, I'm just going to create a new project and I'm going to call this project our video test or video sample. There we go. Um, and so I'm going to use this just kind of with the default settings, um, create a project. And it's going to say it needs to be built. Now, this was just using O3D. Um, I've used it both the development branch, also from uh, my own build folder that I have. But in this case, uh, I'll do this. So we want to build the project. So we'll go ahead and build it. Uh, if you ever want to see what's going on, you can click on Show Logs. It will pull this up. I use Notepad++. And if you hit the little eyeball, uh, you can watch it actually uh, kind of build it in real time uh, as it scrolls through. So. And so as this is going through, it's going to kind of build this new sample project for me. Um, we know where it's going to be placing it, uh, where my packages are going to go, and how we'll do that. So the idea behind this is that, you know, it's there are a lot of formats that can be imported, whether it's FBX, GLTF, uh, OBJ, and it uses the ASIMP library. And if you're not familiar with the ASIMP library, um, it is an open source library. It's fantastic. Um, and it supports a ridiculous number of formats that you can pull in and out. So if you haven't had a chance to check it out, or if you're wondering what can it do or what can it not do, um, take a look at the uh, ASAMP, the Open Asset Import Library. So now this is completed. We're done, so I can close this out. And I'm going to go ahead and open the editor on our video sample. So when this starts up, it's going to start the development, brill, the development build and what we're going to do, it says the asset processor is started. So we want to actually show the asset processor, uh, just in case you're curious. So you can always go to the bottom here, look for this little circle EQ there, and hit show. And you can see this guy kind of getting to work on what it's doing. So you can see all these uh, pieces here. And this is, usually happens the first time you start it. Um, it looks at what can it process, what can be cached, and it'll kind of run all these down for the things that it needs. Now, now mind you, this is for a new project from scratch. Uh, so it's kind of building everything out for the first time of what it's going to do. And you can see the numbers kind of match. This asset processor is what actually does all of the hard work of preparing textures and meshes and all the different object formats. So when you want to know what's going on, you want to check here with the asset processor and see what's actually happening. And you can watch all of it. You can filter it. You can click on any of it here. It'll tell you what was going on, if there were any problems, if there weren't any problems. Um, you'll see we have one here, multiplayer, PBR, failed to compile. And uh, you, know, you can determine, all right, well, do I need to do something about that or not? And so we can always filter those out to which ones have failed. And we can kind of scroll this up and take a look and see, well, you know, what really happened. So this is coming up to the point where it's starting to load the editor. It has enough of the minimums of what we'll need to get started. And so we'll go ahead and move the uh, project manager out of the way since we don't need it. And we'll go straight to O3DE. And we're going to need to build a new level. So. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, we'll create a new level, start building off of here. So we're just going to call this test uh, test one. And you'll notice it's actually telling us this is where it's going to build the project. So this is important to us. So I'm going to copy that path, hit OK, because we don't really need to know where the engine is. And here we are, project, video sample, levels. So here's all the files that are now related to this uh, game, for lack of a better term. Uh, that will build within this environment. So now, as you can see, we have kind of the Royal O3D, which is my top level engine. And then I have my video sample. This, if you notice, kind of mirrors what's in here. We're going to work out of this folder. So one of the first things we'll start with is let's go ahead and find uh, just a regular 3D asset. And Sketchfab is really good about that. So you can go to Sketchfab. Uh, when you go to Sketchfab, you'll see they have a search in here. Uh, just type CC0 and uh, search on it. And you'll see there's a whole bunch of things you can actually pull in, concept cars and cities and all kinds of fun stuff like that. So uh, let's go ahead and just pull in something. In. Here we go. Let's pull a concept car in. This one looks kind of cool. So 
we'll grab this concept car, right? That's what it looks like. And so let's go ahead and download the 3D model. And we have a few options to work with here. We have FBX, USDZ, GLTF, GLT. So we're going to pull down both FBX and we're also going to pull down uh, GLTF. So we have both. So now we have these two here. Let's go ahead and go to where they are. So we're going to go to our uh, downloads folder and I'm going to pull these two away since it saved it as two files. All right, so I have these two versions here that I just downloaded. Um, and so we look at the concept car we have when I open it up. Uh, we have here kind of the textures and we have the source and this is the FBX version. So we know what we're dealing with here. So I can kind of take these and uh, I'll make a folder here and just call one FBX and I'll call the other GLTF. Actually, I think the GLTF one's all contained. Now, nope. it's got another cell. I'll just create another folder called GLTF. Do however you wish, it's up to you. We're gonna take the GLTF folder, the files, we're gonna put them in their folder. We're gonna go into the FBX. We're gonna to toss this into the FBX and close these two out. So this is kind of a temporary holding place for it. Now, what we can do here is we can literally copy these. And if you remember, we have these folders here. If you're not sure where to go or you didn't copy the path, you can always go here to the asset browser, right click and say, open in Explorer. And that'll do the same thing. So it takes us to the same place. As you can see, it looks pretty familiar. So I'm going to take these files and I'm simply going to copy them in. So when I paste them in, one of the things to take note is that remember I showed you the asset processor earlier? Well, the asset processor is going to get to work on these right away, which uh, it pretty much already did them. So you'll be able to see that uh, some of the pieces that we had here were probably already done in video sample assets. Here it is, concept car, uh, FBX texture. So you can see it's already processed these things right away and they're done. So now that they're done, here's the cool part. We have them, uh, we put them in place. If we go back and click here on a different folder and click on assets, notice we have FBX and GLTF. And we go to source and we can grab this concept car uh, that was put here. Or we can grab the GLTF one from the scene. And what we wanna do is we wanna drag it in. Uh, so we'll grab the FBX, we'll drag it in. And if you look, we have our concept car. And the materials are in place. If you look, they're nice and shiny. Um, and there's a whole bunch of things. But the cool part about it is that if it's, a, if it's an FBX file that's been split up into pieces, you also get the benefit of all of those pieces. So that means that you can address each one of these independently. So if I want to take a look at this quarter panel right here, uh, I can. We can see it's a part of the vehicle. Now, if you want to change some of the materials, you'll notice it shows some mesh, and you can rename these or change whatever you want um, and do some pretty cool stuff with it. But if you want to change a material, you need to add a material component. So you add a material component. Now remember, the material right now is built into the FBX. So, so right now O3D knows it's in FBX, but it's kind of read-only mode. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to generate a material, because that means you, run it, you intend to change it. So I'll hit OK. I'll generate it. And then what I want to do is I want to open the material editor on this. And so when I open the material editor, uh, this is going to allow me to go in, look at this material, and do something with it. So if you notice, it's a white uh, material, it's shiny, um, it has a lot of different attributes, it is a PBR type texture. Uh, so there's a, a lot of things that we can do here. Uh, so what we'll do is from this point, we can say we don't like it in white. Uh, so we can turn around and change it into something like red. Uh, eh, a little more red, there we go. So let's make it uh, red, we'll hit OK, and then we can save it and notice it changed the material. Uh, so now our car is in red. And so we can do this with any of the materials. Now, if you notice, it only changed the one, even though the others may be using it, right? And so what we'll do is with this here, if we go back, notice it doesn't have a material component. So we're going to want to add a material component again, and we generate, hit OK. And because it's the same material, it knows to pick up what the other one is. So that means that you're, cha you're taking each one and you're pointing it to where it is. So I can generate, OK. This gives you the flexibility of being able to change the material either per, per object um, or as a whole if you want to name them all the same. So if you notice, I'm kind of systematically generating, building. I could take them all and do the same thing uh, and generate it 
you know, I don't have to just onesie twosie it if I don't want. But um, you know, you can see we've I've kind of generated enough here that what we want to see. So now what we can do with some of this is say I take this red or I want to change it because we're using the same red material. Um, I can change these as well. Let me just change this one as well. Generate another one. All right. So let's just say I'm just not into red anymore. Uh, I want to see it somewhere else in like a green. So I can hit OK. And because they're tied against this material, they all turn green. Uh, the other thing is because these are PBR textures, you can kind of have some fun with it. So let's say we want to make it a bit more metallic. Um, we can do that and kind of save that. You'll notice now it's starting to reflect uh, the ground and the backgrounds and pieces like that. So it's starting to look a little more like that. So you can change the textures, change the objects, um, you know, change anything you want on this and kind of go really crazy with it uh, however you want. So the other thing about this is if you notice I changed the one material on these, but I could go into this where I have this, um, it's set up to be done where it is in this model. I can change the material at the same time into something else where I'd like to have a different body, a different material against it. So I can just say file, give me a new material document, the standard PBR, and I'm going to call this, uh, instead of untitled, I'm just going to call it car door. Uh, and save. And so now I have a car door uh, that is white. And so as a result, right now it's sitting in my GLTF folder because that's where I told it to. It wasn't really the idea, but I have this material. Now I can say, well, I want, I don't know, teal doors because I'm weird like that. Or maybe I want, actually, we're going to make them dark. So I can turn around, tell this thing to make it like that, and save it. And now we've got a material here, but this is still tied to Body Color Supra. So we're going to want to take it and have it change to the car door. I can either go that way and pick it out of the folder, and you notice it changes. Um, alternatively, I could have also just taken this car door material and dragged it right here, and it would have had the same result. Just like this here, I can drag this back in. This was the old material, and it turns back to green. So this is how you can kind of modify and change and do some really cool stuff uh, with different models. Very easy to import, very easy to manipulate with things. Um, and this was how to do it with an FBX. Uh, GLTF, same idea. So um, remember I did both FBX and GLTF. So I have my scene GLTF. Uh, I can bring this in. Now GLTF, on the other hand, this thing made it massively large. Um, really crazy looking. But it's not a big deal. We still have the same benefit of where we have now a root node. We have all the other pieces that are combined with it. But I can change, change uniform scale, say 0.01. And I can go and find it. Uh, if you ever can't find where your model is, hit the letter Z, uh, and Z will take you to it. But if you notice, here we are again. Same thing as before. This one adds kind of some chrome pieces to it. Um, and I can click on any of these other objects that I want and do the same thing I did before. Add a material, generate a material, uh, edit it in the material editor. Notice it's white. I can change it over to, I don't know, yellow and save it and poof, it's yellow. Now the cool thing is, you remember before I generated some other materials, I can still take my old car door material and I can stuff it right in here and notice it'll change it that way too. So anytime you create a material, uh, you can assign it pretty much against anything that you want and be able to have it kind of operate in that manner. So notice I'll take this here and this was kind of the old green one I created. So this is how you can take something from really anywhere, FBX, USD, and, and mind you, you know, the FBX should be at least configured where the textures are, are discoverable. But this will give you a general idea of what you can do uh, as a whole to build something uh, and import something from any other source.